What you are about to see is an exceptionally obscure ritualistic walk of Taoist origin, known to some as the steps or paces of Yu, where a Taoist mystic emulates the limping of Yu the Great, a legendary ruler known for introducing flood control. He himself supposedly had a limp. Some practitioners drag one foot behind the other as they pace during rituals of purification and exorcisms. There are many variations of this mysterious practice, all of which are age-old, tried and tested. Depending upon the lineage, some Taoists tread the stars, whilst others prefer to use the I Ching Bagua system by pacing the eight triagrams or the Lo Shu magical squares. Both generate incredible results. Very few Western occultists are familiar with this ancient dance. Even fewer know how to properly perform it. In this video, I will demonstrate and explain the Bugong system, where one walks along the guideline, first recorded in the Three Kingdoms records. This walk focuses on pacing the seven stars or the Northern Dipper asterism in order to receive the blessings and power of the nine star lords. These lords act as celestial accountants, keeping records on all living mortals from their heavenly abode. They dictate fortune and misfortune. They are the deciders of fate and they govern all human lives. Together these stars form a total of nine heavens, with a deity for each one. The stars can choose to extend your life or to end your life depending on your lifestyle. The aim of working with these stars is deep rooted in personal longevity. If you wish to prolong your life and remove yourself from the registry of death, you can contact these great beings by mastering the art of feng shui the study of wind and water. If you wish to maintain good health, the stars will also assist you. The stars will give out rewards or punishments depending upon your actions. The Northern Dipper is believed to be the gate of the Tao. A magician can enter and travel into the afterlife. He must visualize himself pacing through heaven, treading on the sacred stars and becoming one with the great void. It is the physical act of aligning heaven with earth the mind and the astral mind. The magician is essentially walking between the worlds, harvesting the power of the Dipper and using it on the earthly plane. The magician can use the power for a variety of needs depending upon his or her intent. For me, as a Taoist weather practitioner, I am able via this walking meditation to contact a cosmic deity known as Tai Yi who resides in the brightest star of the Little Dipper. He is known as the Supreme Oneness, or the Supreme Emperor of Heaven. It was said that Tai Yi used the Dipper to breathe life into all beings, using the purest form of Qi, energy. Some say that Tai Yi used the Dipper as his heavenly chariot, carefully controlling the four seasons and distributing the yin and the yang to all forms of life. Some say he created the universe itself. Since he is the god of skies and unity, I am able to work with him and the Dipper to change the earthly environment at will. My forte is the summoning of wind and rain. Each external element corresponds with an emotion. I am able to blow away bad luck by procuring a strong gale. I can call forth rain to wash away doubts, cleanse my energies and remove old fears or insecurities. By summoning snow, ice or frost, I can preserve memories and positive experiences by freezing them in the moment. This type of magic encourages you to be creative and independent. It leaves room for individual preference. When one walks the stars of the Northern Dipper, they are able to impersonate the great Tai Yi. They have the chance to ask for forgiveness, to undo sins and make a fresh start. Many regard the Dipper as being the origin of the universe the beginning of all that is. When you work with a Dipper, you are working with energy of immortality, and as such, you should approach the stars with honor and awe. Many mystics greater than you or I have walked these stars, either to gain supernatural power or to ascend for eternity. It is important to know that there are nine stars rather than just seven. Four stars in the scoop, three in the handle, and the last two stars are known as Fu and Bai exist in a purely metaphysical state. They remain unseen to most mortals who are not yet highly cultivated. Mystics spend decades attempting to reach them. To those lucky few who can, they will enjoy long fruitful lives and prosperity. 
These last two stars emit a dark light, an anti-light. They represent the sun and the moon, and they are the assistants of the other stars. Some say they have a female yin energy, which is calming, quiet, and passive. Some believe that Fu and Bai are inhabited by the wives of the nine emperors. For this working, one should not begin the ceremony without the proper ritual bathing process. One should also dress in accordance to the ancient rites. The robes themselves should be black, grey, and white, with the vermilion bird embroidered across the borders. The bird, not to be confused with the phoenix, is one of the four symbols of the Chinese constellations. The bird has a strong association with the direction of south and the season of summer. A large golden lotus crown or headdress is also needed. Before I do get started with showing you the footage of how the ritual dance should be performed, I do want to explain a few things, more personal things, of how I use the Bugong system. With me, it's always been more of an add-on and an extension to an already pre-existing ritual. So say, for example, when I summon a southeastern wind, I'm going to need a tremendous amount of energy in order to accomplish that. Because I use the Seven Star System for almost everything, talismans, the altar, the robes, that is where I get the power in order to do those supernatural feats. So I will pace the seven stars in order to cultivate myself. So when I arrive to the altar, I'm spiritually charged and ready to do exactly what I intended to do. Now, could I still summon the winds without pacing the seven stars? It's possible, but I think it would take me longer and the effects wouldn't be so powerful. I think in Western occultism, and this is by no means intended to offend anyone, but I think that there is this mindset of whoring out deities. So you work with this deity to get this result, and there's almost no love there. There's almost no connection, no spirit, real spiritual connection to whatever you're working with. So when I work with Zhuge Liang, or Lamat, or the Nine Star Lords, I instantly feel familiar with them. I love them and I care deeply about them because I've been working with them for so many years and they're very personal to me. So please try to build up some kind of bond with your deities. So we can talk the talk, but now it's time for us to walk the seven stars walk. Let's get started. So here I am in my beautiful wintry peach garden. So let me just explain to you what it is that I'm actually doing in this clip. When you are working with the seven stars or the nine star lords, you always have to ask permission and be granted permission for them to allow you to do certain things. Even myself, after working with them for about a decade, I still have to abide by the rules. I can't deviate from them. And so what I'm doing in this situation is I'm asking them to show me a sign. In my mind, I'm saying to them, if I am to work in this space on this day at this time, give me a sign that I can do it. And there's a reason in this particular clip here, you can see I'm smiling. And that's because in my mind, I said to myself, if this is made to be, I want to see a brown leaf falling from the tree. And in that moment, as soon as I said that in my thoughts, that's exactly what happened. As you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm drawing out a magic circle with my feathered fan, my Kong Ming fan, which to Western practitioners works quite similar to a wand. I'm doing this to consecrate the area. And I'm the type of person that's not always satisfied with one answer. And I wanted extra clarification. So I said once again to the Dipper Lords, if I am to work in this area, show me a sign. And instead of a leaf falling down, this time I said, make the winds blow. And indeed, they did. So with all of that settled, I am now ready to pace the seven stars with solemn steps. Taking long strides in a zigzag-like fashion, eyes fixated on an invisible point, as I'm doing this, I can feel my breathing changing and my heart rate changing. And each step I take, I can feel myself drifting further and further into Tai Yi's territory. I feel like I'm ascending into heaven and I'm becoming one with my astral self. It's quite a bizarre feeling, especially if you're not used to it. 
If you're doing this for the first time, it might feel a bit disconcerting to you, but believe me, after a while, you start to realize this is bliss. Here is a shot of me pacing from the back. As you can see, I'm doing my best to maintain excellent posture, which enables you to get into that flow state of mind a lot better when you have really good posture. You'll also notice that I'm constantly linking and holding my hands together whilst I'm pacing. This is because I want to enable the chi, the life force, to circulate around my body and not get stuck. Now, if I take my hands away, the chi, the energy that I've cultivated while pacing, will start to dissipate. And the whole idea is that you're building up, you're spiritually charging yourself, so when you reach your sacred ground or your altar, that's when you release your hands. So do not release your hands until you're finished pacing. You can see here in my hands, I'm also carrying a Kong Ming fan. Now this isn't a mandatory requirement. You don't have to use the Kong Ming fan. This is just something that I do because I believe it brings me closer to my spirit guide and my astral master Zhuge Liang, who was known in the Three Kingdoms era for carrying a Taoist Kong Ming fan. As you take each step, the idea is that you're not concentrating on where you're placing your feet. If you focus too much on your body movements, you will find yourself coming out of that flow state. So the idea is that it, it should come second nature to you eventually. So I would say before you begin to do the meditation, just try to do the practical work first because you've got to feel confident in your strides. Another piece of advice I would give, I'm not doing it here because it was a rainy day, it was actually kind of a wet day, but I would really recommend that you try to do these rituals barefoot. The reason for that is because it almost gives you a connected plug-in effect. So with your skin, your body touching the surface of the earth, you feel like you've become a conduit and the energy is passing through you and it also purifies your body of any toxins. This is very important if you want to practice a lot of Taoist magic because you have to abstain from certain things. But when you practice a seven star walk with bare feet, you are purified of those, uh, of those things. So alcohol, eating certain kinds of meat, etc. So definitely try to do this ritual barefoot. So how do you know when you're going to ascend? I can only speak from my experience, but to me personally, it's almost like reality ceases to exist. So say for example, when you get a piece of fabric and you hold it over a light and the light is strong enough to shine through the fabric and you start to see bits of light coming through the stitching and the sewing and the small holes, that's how the world starts to look. So you see this uh, overexposed kind of crystal shard light coming through all of reality. So you see it coming through the grass, coming through the trees, the sky, and it almost looks like twinkling stars, thousands of them in your vision. And all of these lights have a slight warmth to them. And the more steps you take, the more paces you take, the warmer and the stronger the lights get. And that's a sign that you're going deeper into the trance state. And if you keep going, eventually you will be able to open up the barrier to the afterlife, to the astral realm, or what the Taoists call heaven. And that's when you can communicate with the celestial masters, and you can communicate with each individual star. Now, some people, when they pace, they will say certain incantations in their minds or out loud. I prefer to say them in my mind. I like the peace and quiet, not to disrupt the flow. So I say everything in my thoughts. I don't actually speak it out loud. Also, please be aware that the experience I've just described with the glowing warm lights, you might not actually experience that straight away. I think there's a huge problem right now with occultists that they look up to people on YouTube. I call them the YouTube gurus. And they try to emulate or copy what they have done, what they have gone through. You've got to have your own experience. You have your own life story, your own emotions. Therefore, you shouldn't look to other people and say, how should I experience this? That's something you will find out for yourself. 
I can teach you the steps, I can teach you the history and mythology and the items behind the rituals, but ultimately it comes down to you and your own natural personality. And I think that's something that you might come across those lights, but they might be a different color to you. It all depends on where you're at. So in conclusion, if you do attempt this practice, please maintain some level of reverence. You are going to want to be ultra respectful to these deities, and rather than demanding and ordering, you are requesting, but you're doing it in a persuasive way. So thank you for watching everybody, take care, I'll be back soon.